forecast. It's all perspective. If 50 is cold, then, then we're good. We can handle that. Thanks, Danielle. March is Women's History Month, and we're celebrating here on Ion Northeast Kansas by inviting some of the groundbreaking women in our community to the couch for conversations. We have two great ones to kick it off, both with a passion for children. Nancy Perry was also known as Miss Nancy <laughs> to a lot of people out there, the longtime leader also of what's now United Way of Paw Valley. And Susan Garlinghouse founded Topeka Collegiate School and helped launch the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. Welcome, ladies. So glad you both could join us today. Thank you. I'm so excited. And Nancy, I, I've long admired you for your work with the United Way. How did you get started, first of all, in broadcasting? What happened that led you to become well, Miss Nancy and have your magic mirror? Well, it has a little bit to do with having kindergarten experience because when they were hiring, you had to be between 25 and 30 with kindergarten experience. Believe it or not, that was the requirement. And a friend of mine, we talked about it with Sally Blair. She knew about the, she heard about it, read about it. And, and she said, Nancy, you've got to go do it. I can't, yeah, I can't go because I'm a middle school teacher. <laughs> and so I said, oh, I kind of wanted to be a stay at home mom. And she said, y y this, is, this job is going to be made for you really. Well, anyway, I tried out, got it. And the rest is history. And I absolutely <laughs> loved it. It was really fun. How did that lead you into the United Way? Well, after I did that, then I did a kind of a talk program you for were a here, while. Yes. Uh -huh. But uh, actually, Starks Vincent ca came and asked me, he said, would you ever consider leaving TV? And he said, I've got a job I'd like to have you interview for. And I said, well, I'll think about it. But I had to put a resume together because I was hired in May for teaching school for 501. I didn't ever have to have a resume. <laughs> so I had to get a resume in order to apply. But anyway, I was very fortunate. I did get the job. I know being a native Topekan was a lot of it. But that's basically how it was. So your journey went from, and I never want to say just a stay-at-home mom, because right. we all know right. what a job that that's is. Right. I, I don't personally. I know from watching other moms <laughs> right. in my life. But that's where you were, Susan. Where did your journey turn from being a mom to these things that are now part of our community's fabric? Well, we moved to Topeka in 1971, 72. And it was the elementary school that, our children attended was really fantastic and as I look back it was especially fantastic because they encouraged parents to be involved so we could do all sorts of things and we did on Wednesday afternoons parents would come in and we would have like gifted it was before the gifted program but they would come in and do different teaching items and so it was really really nice but then Jardine for middle school became a, and it was actually junior high mm -hmm. at that point but it was very different and our oldest was a really good math student, but no genius level. And she and her girlfriend finished math in February. They finished the book. And that was a little bit of a problem because I wasn't in favor of them doing nothing in math class. And so they said, well, if they would take a test. I first went to see Dick Driver, who was head of the department. Mm -hmm. And he said, we'll give them a test and we'll figure something out if they get 95 on the test. Well, one of them got a 93 and one of them got a 94. <laughs> so that was out. Yeah, just and, below. <laughs> and, you know, I'd never wondered until it became Women's History Month this year whether if they'd been boys, whether mm -hmm. something would have been done. But mm -hmm. I don't know that, so I'm just right. throw that mm -hmm. out there. But at the same time, 501 hired somebody to come in and talk to all the middle school or junior high teachers about brain periodization. And that was the crazy idea that the brain only grew at two-year intervals. So while they were in middle school or junior high, this was kind of a holding pattern. Well, that didn't really sit very well you with me either. You didn't want your kids to be in a holding pattern. Yeah. Really. So, and then the third thing that happened that kind of pulled everything together was something on NPR that I listened to about some doctors that had some newborn kittens and they wanted to know what would happen if they sewed their eyes shut and then two weeks later opened them. And they found out that the cats were, kittens were born, were blind for life. Oh no. So that kind of said to me too, maybe there's only correlation, maybe it's something else, but maybe the human brain needs encouragement and excitement more often than we know. Mm -hmm. And I kind just like thought- the precursor to what we would call brain drain today. Exactly, mm -hmm. pretty much so. So I just thought we've got to do something and that was to try to start what is now Topeka Collegiate. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. So this all leads to a journey through leadership, and I want to find out more about that. So we're going to continue our conversation with Susan and Nancy next.